and, and Bex, I think you're more on the ground actually doing the work. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair to say. These guys are just telling you what to do, right? Um, so, I mean, um, Adam, you've worked on the, on the very, very big budget stuff. You had Dark Knight, I think yeah. you were on. All these kind of huge films. Uh, and then I guess some slightly smaller stuff as well. So how, how do you see a change in the kind of work that you do there? Um, well, I mean, what these guys say is exactly true. There's, there really is no reason not to be able to do it. I think the only difference is, um, is, is the scale of, of your team, essentially, because the artists you're employing on you know, these big uh, superhero films are the same guys that are doing the work on Doctor Who. And you, know, we, you mentioned uh, dinosaurs before. And uh, I mean, we did dinosaurs for Doctor Who Series 7. And Primeval. And Primeval. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's, that's basically one artist building that. So, I mean, uh, from my point of view, you know, the work I'm going to be employed to do on uh, you know, the next Batman or the work I'm going to be employed to do on a, on, a, on a smaller budget film is the same level for me. I'm, I'm still bringing the same, you know, uh, experience that I have. But if anything, I'll be given more responsibility to uh, build that asset and uh, ha I have slightly more creative control. So actually, it's, as an artist, it's, it's actually slightly more rewarding to work on uh, a smaller budget film. So it's, a, it's more of a, a smaller team, so you actually get more in to do you individually? You get more input, I would say. I mean, the, the, what you talked about, uh, having a lot more sort of middle management uh, is very true. But I mean, the, I think films that are... I mean, Marvel's now owned by Disney, and they're very careful with every aspect of their product. So even characters that are very background... Um, are, are, are designed and scrutinized to the absolute minutia. And then, for all you know, that's going to be left on the cutting room floor. So uh, it's, it's slightly less satisfying in some ways. Yeah. Um, Be or Bex, you have, you're at the Imaginarium. If, if people don't know, the Imaginarium is Andy Serkis's brainchild, basically, uh, and, and specializes in performance capture and motion capture. And, and that, to me, is, as a lay person, if you like, as a journalist, seems like something that is very much... I, I only see talked about on the very biggest films. Is that something that you can do on a, on a smaller scale? That, yeah, that's, that's the sort of difference for these guys is that what we do and what I do personally is very, very specialised and very expensive, per, like supposedly, yeah, um, because it requires a lot of technology to run it and um, it's not just something that can be done with one computer. It has to require a camera system. It has to have several computers. And it can go above and beyond. And the technologies that are developed for it, um, sort of real-time previews and stuff like that, are all big, expensive R&D projects to make this technology the best that it possibly can be. However, it can be achieved. Um, so I sort of specialize in facial motion capture. And you can create your own facial cap, uh, motion capture with an eyeliner pencil and a webcam. And there are also now technologies. Um, there's a, a program called FaceShift. And it's basically they're trying to take these big technologies and not dumb them down at all. It's very clever how they do them. But they're creating them so that young film makers and you know, visual effects artists who want to make films of their own. Um, because at the end of the day, a lot of the time, these, these visual effects artists who who do a lot of the work that is mostly appreciated in these films, um, yeah, they want to do, they do themselves. And they, you know, like, okay, maybe I'm not pointing a camera, as you say, but I'm going to create something. And you can do it at home. So it's, it's about creating um, these big budget films and putting them in TV and putting them in, in indie films and how the technology can still say just as good, but, you know, just it's working around a different way of doing it.